everybody to this second session. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the first speaker, uh, Tanya Ivanova Sullivan from the University of New Mexico. She's going to talk about gender cues trends, facilitates gender processing in children, cross linguistic evidence from Russian and Bulgarian. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, Hello, I'm very excited to be here in uh, York, uh, and this is my first in-person conference after <laughs> we all know what. Uh, so it is exciting to be here, and without further ado, I will share with you the results of our study on um, gender processing in two groups of children, Bulgarian and Russian. Let me just see. Recent cross-linguistic evidence suggests that uh, fine-grained grammatical differences in closely related languages, like Bulgarian and Russian, for example, have direct consequences for language processing in development. In many cases, with gender, for example, they influence children's ability to predict upcoming linguistic uh, information based on multiple cues. On the other hand, Formal uh, gender cues have been discussed in light of um, the variation and learnability of gender systems um, across the world, particularly in Jenny Audring's typological account of principles operating in the organization of cross-linguistic space of gender. Our gender study takes cue pun intended, uh, from two approaches to gender. The first one is Westergaard's uh, micro-cues model based on Lightfoot uh, original model of cues. Uh, and this model assumes that children are sensitive to fine distinctions in the syntax, the micro-cues. Uh, and those micro-cues are exponents of structures which are already present in children's uh, grammar but are gradually pieced together uh, along the course uh, of the acquisition in accordance with the UG principles. Uh, the other account uh, we uh, take into account is Audring's typological model, which looks at gender cues and their strength uh, that determine their characteristics of the viable, the most viable cues for gender acquisition. So apart from uh, larger typological differences in the uh, number of values in gender systems across the world, there are also fine-grained differences in the quality and the quantity of um, gender cues that children use. For example, transpar for example, transparency, phonological transparency, has been found to facilitate um, acquisition of gender assignment and gender agreement. Also the number and type of gender cues, uh, they also matter. And in more general terms, as Audring um, uh, assumes, the gender systems, the topic of uh, the gender agreement systems, the topic of our research, which are phonologically more transparent in uh, structurally richer uh, eight gender acquisition. They're more beneficial for uh, gender acquisition. Okay. Um, so we, uh, as I said, we are uh, looking at two closely related Slavic languages, Russian and Bulgarian. Uh, they uh, both have three genders, feminine, masculine, and neuter, uh, but the, uh, and they both have transparent and opaque noun endings. Uh, gender mark noun endings. However, in Bulgarian, the, uh, those endings, transparent and opaque, are distributed differently. And you can see in Bulgarian, we have transparent noun endings in three genders, just like Russian, but the opaque uh, noun endings are present only in feminine in Bulgarian compared to Russian. So in Bulgarian, the opaque noun endings are distributed less like, regularly in a less regular fashion than in Russian, and uh, just just like any uh, gender agreement uh, system, you can uh, you have a gender marked uh, agreement on the modifiers. In this case, I have given you 
adjectives to look at. And basically, pretty much the same as you can see Bulgarian and Russian, with one crucial difference that I will discuss in a second. So we are looking in our study, we're looking at uh, two of those characteristics of gender cues, perceptual transparency uh, or phonological transparency and structural richness, uh, two of the things that Jenny Audring uh, uh, discusses in her typological account. And I have given you a comparison of Bulgarian and Russian in this slide. So uh, the first um, aspect are the endings on the modifier, adjective. We have disyllabic endings on the gender marked uh, disyllabic endings on the modifier in Bulgarian and Russian. Uh, so in this case, they are compatible, except for in Bulgarian, those disyllabic endings in a, are in a definite context and in Russian in attributive context because Russian does not have a definite article. Uh, but then the other two aspects actually are where Bulgarian trumps Russian or outweighs Russian. Uh, the first one is that in Bulgarian, there's no neutralization of feminine and neuter contrasts uh, on the um, um, uh, marker, the gender mark on the modifier. And in Russian, there is, meaning for Russian children, uh, there's no difference between feminine and neuter when they hear the ending of the adjective. That's, that's what we call neutralization of the contrast, only in stem stress adjectives. Uh, and in regard to structural richness, as I mentioned, Bulgarian has a definite article overtly realized on the adjective, Russian does not. So in this case, we have more gender uh, uh, cues in Bulgarian mark on the adjective than um, in Russian. And structurally, this makes Bulgarian richer. Okay. So the previous study on uh, gender acquisition, uh, on acquisition of gender agreement, uh, not that many, the processing of gender agreement. Uh, in Russian, we have um, uh, two um, studies with mixed findings. The first one is from Sakirina 2012, uh, where she looked at um, the anticipation of uh, the target. Uh, and she had uh, the adjective silver before the noun, which is absolutely normal in Russian and the gender, uh, masculine gender, is marked on the adjective, the ending. So uh, she tested two groups, children and adults. The children did not look at the target before the noun onset, but the adults did. Uh, in a more recent study, kind of similar, but a slightly different design, uh, because there were two adjectives, uh, not just one, uh, pretty and green, right, marked for gender. The children in that study, Olmeister's study, looked at the target before the noun onset. So they did use the cues to anticipate uh, the upcoming noun, but age had a marginal effect, meaning older children were better anticipating uh, the noun. In Bulgarian, we don't have any experimental studies uh, of gender agreement. Unfortunately, this is the first one. And uh, we do have naturalistic studies. Uh, very, very few. And, uh, but the interesting thing in one of those studies was the production of rhyme agreement by three-year-old Bulgarian children. So you can see there, Malkoto Metro, uh, Malkoto means the small, uh, Metro is the teddy bear. So the correct ending of the noun is Meche, yeah. But the child actually does uh, rhyme, the agreement between the adjective and the noun, incorrectly producing O instead of yeah, on the noun. Uh, and I also have to mention that the phonology and morphology both interact in the definite article, which is a post-post definite article in Bulgarian. You can see the noun uh, kniga, book, which is a transparent noun. So the ending a uh, clearly points to a feminine uh, gender. And you attach the de definite article ta, which is a morpheme to that noun to make it the book. Uh, but when you have a opaque noun such as krv, the blood, uh, blood uh, which ends in a consonant, and typically consonant ending nouns are masculine and Bulgarian, you still attach the same definite articles, ta, which makes it a little bit more quirky, as you can see, compared to the uh, transparent one. All right. So our research questions were uh, pretty straightforward. What is the role of cues, gender cues on modifiers? So remember, we're only looking at gender agreement 
in first language acquisition uh, of gender agreement. And number two, how do the fine-grained differences that uh, people have started talking about recently, like Christensen and all, how do the fine-grained differences in the strength of cues between Russian and Bulgarian impact uh, acquisition of gender agreement and processing? So we, again, we're going to focus only on two things here, perceptual transparency, which is manifested in the role of stress in adjectival endings only in Russian, because in Bulgarian, remember, there's no neutralization uh, of gender there, and structural richness, which is the quantity, how many cues, and the type of those cues uh, that are marked on the modifiers. Our predictions are, first, that if children use gender cues on the modifiers to predict the upcoming linguistic information, meaning the gender of the noun, they will look at the target earlier in the more cue informative different condition than in the uninformative same condition. And two, uh, we predicted an interaction between gender and language, uh, meaning that Bulgarian children will look at the target earlier than Russian children due to the greater strength of gender cues uh, in that language, which I already showed you in the, uh, in the table. Uh, we had 23, rather small sample, uh, 23, 22 uh, children tested in Moscow and in Sofia way before all the current events happened. Uh, and you can see the age range is quite compatible. Uh, the design uh, was uh, two by three by two uh, with a little um, disclaimer here. As you remember, I told you that opaque nouns are present only um, in feminine, uh, uh, inanimate in Bulgarian. That's why we did not test neuter in uh, Bulgarian, only in Russian. We tested only feminine and masculine in Bulgarian because we wanted to have two nouns of different genders uh, for our different informative condition. And the condition that I already mentioned, uh, there were two conditions same, with meaning two objects of the same gender, and that condition was not informative, and the different condition, which had two objects of different genders, and that condition was informative, and we rotated them in a Latin square design. So this was the procedure. The children were seated in front of a laptop, um, and they saw a PowerPoint. They had to focus at first on that smiley face that appeared on the screen. And they saw those two objects uh, in either of the conditions, same or different. Uh, and while they were looking at the screen, they heard the prompt show where here is the white palm. And in, in Bulgarian for the Bulgarian children and in Russian for the Russian children. And they had to actually point with their hands. I mean, they were sitting with the, their chin on the chin rest, right? But they had to point with their little fingers, they were so cute, which uh, object <laughs> they, uh, they would pick. So, um, oh, now I'm speaking louder. Okay. So uh, we obviously recorded uh, their eye movements while uh, they were uh, looking at the two objects. Uh, and we analyzed them. Uh, there were four regions that, that we uh, defined, and the critical region that we focus on is region uh, three, which is the adjective offset. Uh, we just gave you the Russian version there, the ending and, and the beginning of the noun and the noun onset. So this is the region that we predicted that, will, that things will start happening because the preamble and the adjective, uh, beginning of the, the adjectives, uh, that were too early, the region's too early for any effects. And then in regard to condition, we predicted that target will be identified faster in different condition than in the same. How am I doing? Five minutes? Okay. All right. So those are the results. As you can see very clearly, can you see clearly? Okay. Um, <laughs> I can see it very clearly, but uh, so you have Bulgarian and Russian, Bulgarian to the left, Russian to the right, and uh, uh, the red is the uh, different condition, the greenish is the same condition. So Bulgarian children 
uh, looked at the target noun earlier uh, in the different condition than in the same condition. That's very clear. Uh, and I'll show you uh, the next slide when exactly that happened in what window, uh, time window. And in Russian, you can see that this is not the case. I mean, things are not happening uh, the way they're happening in Bulgarian. We do still find an effect of, of uh, the upcoming uh, prediction of the target, but a little bit later, okay? And this is exactly how those time windows, um, uh, the results in each time window, 100 millisecond time window. So the pairwise comparisons showed that um, Bulgarian children looked to the target uh, earlier and they had more also uh, um, percentage wise, more target uh, looks to the target in the uh, different condition, the informative condition. Uh, and that happened in 200, 200 300 uh, millisecond uh, time window uh, after the adjective offset. And in Russian, the, this also happened, but in the 400, 500 millisecond time window. So this was a very clear result. Uh, and remember, we also uh, focused on perceptual, um, um, uh, the, the effect of stress, uh, the perceptual transparency only in Russian. And we wanted to see whether Russian children were uh, influenced by uh, the stem stress adjectives, whether they couldn't differentiate between feminine and neuter, but we did not find any effect of um, stress. Stem stress and en ending stress adjectives behave the same. Now back to our predictions. Uh, the first thing we thought was that if children really use gender cues on the modifiers to predict the upcoming noun, they will look at the target noun earlier in the more informative uh, condition than uh, in the uninformative, and this was partially confirmed for Bulgarian. Uh, and then our second prediction, um, uh, we see the inter uh, we um, added the interaction with language, gender, and language. So Bulgarian children looked at target earlier than Russian children. Uh, yeah. And we, we actually determined the three-way interaction here. And this was due to the greater strength of gender cues on Bulgarian adjectives. So what is the role of uh, gender cues? Cues on modifiers, um, adjectives in our case, uh, do facilitate the acquisition of gender agreement, but this is modulated by uh, factors such as quantity and uh, quality of those cues. So we found additive support from the overtly realized cues, uh, just like Aud Audrey predicted. Uh, in the case of Bulgarian, um, adjective and determiner marked cues on the adjective. Uh, and in uh, regard to perceptual transparency and structural richness, those are important in light of the uh, Westergaard's microcues model, where she uh, 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 deems the importance of UG uh, uh, pretty, pretty great, the structure of, uh, in, in UG terms. And you saw that in Bulgarian, we have additional structure, which is the determinate definite article, which lacks, which Russian lacks. And the input is the perceptual silence uh, that in our case did not really matter for the Russian children, but, um, but theoretically uh, it could in uh, other type of um, studies. So um, what, uh, what is the uh, takeaway message from this cross-linguistic analysis? So this, this is one of the very, very few, uh, uh, which surprisingly very few cross-linguistic studies of uh, closely related languages, uh, and especially uh, languages that do have similar gender systems. So we saw that the gender cues uh, that we explored on the uh, adjectives have differential impact on gender processing. This was very clear uh, with the Russian and Bulgarian uh, children. And we saw that there is um, uh, hierarchy in uh, grading those, the sensitivity to those cues 
structural richness, structurally richer cues are more important for children, uh, more beneficial for children than uh, perceptually transparent cues. Uh, and on a similar note, um, we found that structural, both structural and distributional factors uh, impact gender agreement um, and processing. And particularly in Bulgarian, we don't have um, the gender cues on, on nouns are less reliable than the gender cues on the modifiers. And in Russian is the other way around because in Russian, gender cues on nouns are more equally regularly distributed uh, across genders. But in Russian, the gender cues on modifiers, adjectives are weaker compared to Bulgarian. So we have to take into account both structural and distributional differences between uh, different languages. All right, so in conclusion, in conclusion, uh, children, we do uh, believe that children uh, use micro cues, inflectional affixes in this uh, case, to process gender agreement and to facilitate gender acquisition in more general terms, but not all micro cues are, are created equal. Uh, we need to actually analyze the perceptual transparency, structure, richness uh, along different uh, term, with, within different terms and see that, and we saw that they have differential impact. Uh, and in the future, fine-grained differences uh, should be explored uh, more often, especially uh, between closely related language, typologically closely related languages, uh, just so we can see whether the course of acquisition of a particular phenomena is similar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have time for questions, so please make your way to the microphones, and I would like to encourage students especially. Maybe let's wait a couple more minutes. Anything online? Not yet? Okay, well. Thank you for these are very interesting data and it's nice to see this kind of comparative work. I would like you to relentlessly speculate on the role of age here because your age range went from like 44 months to up to like six and a half years. And we know there are some morphological categories that are not learned into early adulthood even, so. Right, I knew this was coming. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, yes, we did. Um, we should have separated the children into age groups, obviously. Uh, and we uh, meant to do that, except for we couldn't really uh, gather enough uh, uh, data. As you all know, that's always a problem with the little kids. Uh, so we actually had to throw away some data because it didn't really, with the eye tracking, it didn't, um, we, didn't happen. So we already started with smaller, you know, sample. So obviously age could be a factor, but we also think that because literature uh, research shows that around the age of three, children, Russian speaking and Bulgarian children, Bulgarian speaking children, more or less are, you know, that they have acquired the basics of their gender systems. We thought that, you know, we could just go from there. Uh, and uh, we didn't want to take literate children. We didn't. We didn't want to hit that. Uh, you know, that other milestone that could contaminate you know, the data. So that was our incentive. Thanks. Okay, we have a student question. Oh, Hi. Uh, I'm Jack Duff from Santa Cruz. Um, I, was, I was wondering if you could say more about how the windows that you see the effects in Bulgarian and Russian, respectively relate to the onset of the target noun and whether you could you could make any claims about uh overall or any differences in languages between interpreting the the earlier effects to the uh, different gender conditions uh, to either prediction of the actual noun or facilitated integration of the noun once you actually get the phonological information about the noun so the different time windows basically uh, started with the uh, adjective offset, and it was pretty straightforward from there. We just looked at, you know, 100 milliseconds until we got to some results, uh, and this was earlier for Bulgarian than for Russian. And this made us think that uh, Bulgarian children 
are faster integrating that gender information because they had better, I mean, I don't want to say better, but uh, structurally richer uh, cues than, than Russian children. And interestingly, in previous studies of Russian, uh, with, which kind of had similar design to ours, there wasn't any effect of, of gender cues on adjectives. So our study is not an outlier in this, in this respect. Um, we just had, we, we compared two languages that was never done before. And maybe in this comparison, we were able to see exactly why Russian children were not doing what we expected them to do in previous studies. No, so does that answer your question? Just partially, uh, maybe to, to rephrase, um, is the effect even in Bulgarian early enough that it's clearly anticipation of the noun? Or, or is it true that at that point, the participants, the children had already heard uh, some of the phonological information? The, about the phonological noun, so. information, right. Absolutely, you know, correct question there. And we think it's the gender information. We don't think it's the phonology of the incoming noun uh, because, you know, they're pretty consistent in, in doing that. So we could have seen other signs, I guess, um, if, if that was the case, if they just heard the first, you know, uh, sound of the noun and then did it, but, but no, they were pretty quick after hearing the adjective. And the adjective has, is bisyllabic, so it's not like one, you know, boom, and they do something. So it, they have enough time to, you know, process that, the, the two different cues, the adjective ending and the determiner. So uh, I will give you one, uh, it, it's a little bit related from our production study, which I didn't discuss here. So the same children did a production study with the same nouns, uh, but you know, time apart. So in the production study, one of the Bulgarian children, she um, had to uh, provide an adjective for the word krv, blood, which is one of the opaque uh, uh, words in Bulgarian. And at first she provided the masculine, uh, adjective ending because the word ends in a consonant, typically masculine. But when she said both words, the adjective and the noun together, she corrected herself immediately. And she said, oh, no, 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 this is the feminine ending. So this is a different type of evidence that agreement, you know, cues on modifiers are very important for, uh, you know, correctly assigning the gender, especially at that early age. She was like five, this, this particular participant. So, sorry for the long. No, very, very interesting, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Oh. And now we're gonna have a talk by Adele. I'm assuming Adele is making her way to the stage.